I think that this whole scenario is going to lead to a solution mm -hmm. that will be the the strategy. Mm -hmm. So, but we have to rewind a little before we get to it yeah. to understand context mm -hmm. of what is a black Hebrew Israelite in the first place before we understand how do we answer them back in a way that's not like talk to the hand like mm -hmm. and, and cancel them. <coughs> right. Um, so, should we do that now? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and mm -hmm. ju just a little bit more background. You the 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 book, especially want to talk to you. The book that Kyrie Irving is promoting. You've like bit you or you've had conversations with that author. Many and and mm -hmm. you're you're very involved with Amari Stoudemire. Um, you're like yeah, I think you helped him through the conversion process. He I don't know exactly. himself, but I was just a study partner of his along you're, the way. You're very involved yeah. in the community. I don't know. I don't know how to categorize Amari. I don't know how he yeah. categorized himself. But like you're, just a holy you're not Jew. just like you're, you're very in this space. In this you are in this yeah. space that a lot of people, when it comes up, is like yeah, and, and shut it down. So, Anti-Semitism. Right. We can't hear it. So I've been in this space because I've been debating these uh, hateful people. Um, obviously, Amari's not in that camp. The mm -hmm. people who are hateful. Um, towards the Jewish people. I've been debating them for many years, <coughs> and I found it to be very easy to discredit their logic that they're promoting, mm -hmm. um, but they're not really coming with logic. They're coming with emotions. Mm -hmm. So that's where the there's like a clash. So can you explain the claims and yes. the context? First, let's go just rewind, because the real mm -hmm. elephant in the room is if you go to the government of Israel's website on their view on the lost tribes of Israel and who's from the House of Israel around the world, mm -hmm. you'll notice one of the most common names in that report is the Igbo tribe, the Igbo tribe. Mm -hmm. And these are about you know 40 or so million people in Nigeria that self-identify as being Jewish. And now there's, you know, 60 Orthodox communities in there who have converted and are practicing Judaism. And the leader of the Igbo people um, ruling over them is trying to, you know, create an independent Jewish state. And they're, they're, they have a whole Jewish revival going there. It's fascinating. And the government of Israel is loving it and they're supporting it. And Jewish people are making documentaries about it. And it's like the most exciting thing ever. And it's giving people a lot of, like, biblical renewal. I but just had a Lyft driver yesterday telling me about all this and i was kind of like all right what it's all true what you're talking about it's crazy so your lift driver was Ebo from nigeria i'm so sure that's what he was saying to me yeah all this stuff he was saying that yeah. he said israel's been supportive so anytime i'm in israel at like the western and, wall and i see a Ebo man yeah. and i could tell because they're wearing nigerian outfits yeah. i say are you, are you jewish he's like yeah how, how do you know and i'm like bro bring it in give me a hug yeah. no that's what he said to me he picked me up at, at a jewish community center he goes are you jewish and I went, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he goes, this uh, just, this this place is this house of worship or this is uh, what is this place? And I told him with the JC. It's like it's a community center. They do events. It's about a uh, building community. They do all sorts of. They take people from all races. I said, yeah. He's like, you know, I am I am from Nigeria. Ibo. He didn't say Nigeria. He, he, and when I said Nigerian, he's like, not Nigerian. Ibo. Yeah. Not Nigerian. I am Ibo. I am Jew. I am Jew. And we're trying to do what Israel did. They're supporting us. And he started going on this whole thing. Yes, because um, Nigeria is just a name that the British like threw on to the amalgamation of a bunch of different tribes there that destabilized the region and mm -hmm. led to a genocide and a holocaust of the Igbo people, um, where mm -hmm. in the 1960s, millions of them were systematically killed and murdered. Yeah, he told me about that too, but I was like running late. So. And so it's like, <laughs> so this is so relevant because we have such a like never again star. holocaust yes, theme, but like yes. these people had it. But what is mind boggling to me, which I can't imagine why this is not in the news and not spoken about, yeah. is that like a large chunk, more than a, a fourth of the transatlantic slave trade came specifically from this one tribe. Mm -hmm. So how are we not starting to connect dots and being like, wait a minute. So the tribe in Africa that the government of Israel is fascinated with and, the, you know, enamored by is now the blood of those people flowing through the African-American community here. Which would make sense to me why they're all being like, we have an Israelite affinity. We're, we're identifying, this is us, we are this. And mm -hmm. so I'm like, so yeah, if the DNA of the blood of these people are in them, they have a valid claim to feel and say that. Where it goes wrong then is where spiritual bullies come and hijack that reality into forming cults that create hate. Um, and etc. So that's those. Those are the people I battle. I'm not battling the reality that you could be from the House of Israel. 
Because, like I said, the bottle shattered and glass went around the whole world. I'm battling the bullies that are standing in between you and your inheritance, which is the Torah. Because if you really are from the house of Israel, come back towards the Torah. It's perfectly been preserved throughout the exile, um, which is what um, guys like Amari Stoudemire did, because he grew up knowing he was from the people of Israel from his mother. He had his identity. Does he have Ebo? Is he is he traced back it's, to that? No, or? we didn't do DNA. No. It's not about that, because... I'm like just curious I said, what his uh, path was to yeah, Judaism. I'm sure it'll be interesting to test, but that blood is flowing throughout the whole West in Africa and into the diaspora here mm -hmm. into America and when guys like Amare looked into it and he saw the Torah and realized that it wasn't coming from me I wasn't middlemanning it the Torah is right here it's mm -hmm. it's from 3,000 years ago yeah. so when he went for the Torah he went for what his ancestors had he wasn't going for something that came from Europe or came from a human alive today he was going for the real thing and so there's intellectual bullies today preventing the emergence of this Hebrew Israelite uh, momentum and that's the documentary that I believe was made that Kyrie uh, posted was by one of these individuals who spun up something that's not real to get people all. What was the false claim? Yeah, wait, wait, go, wait yeah. how are they? How are they getting in between people in the Torah? Because they're making documentaries like this, which make really good arguments that I don't believe are logical, but are getting people's emotions. And and to to distract them from saying like, well, if you're interested in it. To create his own power, this guy. What's wants the motivation? To, he wants to be a king and a prophet. He's like, mm -hmm. I'm. What? What, I'm the what man. are the false claims? Let's just put them out there. What's the debate? Well, there's a. First of all, there's a few, you know, and we'll go through what I think are just the two main ones mm -hmm. for now. We can go in later. One is that there's a prophecy in the Torah in Deuteronomy that says, "I will bring you as slaves again on ships to a land not your own, mm -hmm. and you'll be in exile for four hundred years." Right. So they say the people came on the ships are saying we fulfill this prophecy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we're from the house of Israel. You can come from the Igbo blood. We were slaves on ships. And the, the, and the, the slavery, you know, there was like a 400 year anniversary that came like a couple years ago. And they're like, now the time is up. We're over. Like now we're becoming a nation again. Mm. So that's their thing. So they say you'll see in a lot of the comments. Oh, those those people, those Jews, those white European Jews, they don't fit the description of the curses. So this is context to what they mean when they say that. And so they're saying, because you don't fit the curses, you can't be from the house of Israel. So then I say back to them, like, wait, so only if you were on a slave ship, are you being from the house of Israel? And they're like, yeah. So I'm like, so what about the Igbo tribe back in Africa where you came from who are saying they're from the house of Israel? Are they not from the house of Israel? So that question just like already just... <laughs> What's the response? <laughs> you know, like, what are you going to say? It just disproves the whole logic of the exclusivity of the curse. Right. And once you can disprove it with the people still who never went on ships, then it's the greater exile of the nation is scattered around and four the, corners the of the world. the argument is based on race. They're saying that because the, those people who are white were not on the ships, so therefore they're not part of this prophecy? So Asian, Japanese, Indian, Everyone. you weren't on a ship. You're not part of the prophecy. Okay. That was like the one thing they, they, they claimed. Were Israelites yeah. never put on ships? and put in There actually are stories <laughs> of Israelites being sold on ships, um, you know, in, so. in the Mediterranean yeah. and to Rome. Rome, um, into Egypt. So and slavery as a whole, and as an institution, human institution, was was the standard. Yeah, right. but we're not Everywhere. we're not here to decipher prophecy. Uh -huh. um, we don't believe that's appropriate. Right. And so we'll see what happens in the future. Perhaps they did fulfill the prophecy. Perhaps they didn't. It's an irrelevant point to the mm -hmm. fact that we know they came from people who are from the house of Israel who mm -hmm. are now practicing Torah. Mm -hmm. So that was like one thing, which was just like. The exclusivity thing's over mm -hmm. because then you're just discrediting the people you came from. It mm -hmm. doesn't make any sense. You share the same DNA. The second thing was, especially in this Hebrews to Negroes documentary, which I've been battling him for many years, these guys. It's oh, on that, YouTube. Oh, just a, the, the, the documentary is called he Hebrews, Hebrews to uh, Negroes. It's, it's now like the best-selling thing on Amazon, they say. It's, it's a, a documentary, documentary also. And, and, he, and that's the thing that Kyrie Irving recently promoted. He promoted he on it. Instagram or something. Yeah. Like yeah. Dalton Jr., yeah. is that his yeah. name? Yeah, I looked him So up. you could see me and him on YouTube yeah. where I'm like trying to very clearly just like tell him like this. And then, but he's trying to disprove me with like, well, what color was these people? What I'm like, your questions are so irrelevant. It doesn't. It's like I'm trying to focus on one point that discredits your whole entire thing, and you're trying to do periphery point proving right. over here. Um, the second thing which I said, which I found to be very, uh, you know, elephanty in the roomy. I always say that because it's like, well, is he says that the I'm like, so who are the real Jews? He says. They are. They were real Jews in the Iberian Peninsula in Spain. You know, in the, you know, a thousand years ago, eight hundred years ago, these were real Jews. The Sephardic Jews. That's what he would okay. say, and yeah. you know, he's been, he said that. So I say back to him, 
I say, okay, so you're the descendants of these of these Iberian Peninsula Jews in, in North Africa and the Moors and mm-hmm. all that. Um, did you read anything they wrote? You know, because they wrote things down and we have all their writing still. They actually wrote things down every 50 years. Uh, we have all their texts. And so they can't answer that. I'm like, well, if you did, you would see that there's such a reality called conversion uh, from the laws of Moses. These real Jews, these real Israelites you speak of had the laws of Moses and in it is called conversion. So off the bat, there's no such thing as exclusivity to a bloodline because they're all about we are the real ones. We are the bloodline. It's not about bloodline. And it wasn't about bloodline since Moses. It was about the 613. It was about the truth. Who's in on this truth can be part of the house of Israel. So (laughs) exactly. So I said to them, even like I was willing to humble myself. My family traces back to King David through the Vilna Gon, but I was willing to be like, I'll settle to be a convert, and then you'd have to love me as your brother. Mm-hmm. But like you hate me, and you think I'm like a devil. You and think he does I'm evil. hate you. Yeah, these guys. They, yeah. Well, this can't, this hate that they have for the That's, white man has nothing to do with yeah. us. This this was taught to them by the Europeans. This is trauma. How trauma works. Mm-hmm. When you abuse someone, the person you abuse usually will display those symptoms of abuse onto other people. So people, you know, not to compare this to that, but people who were molested as children often statistically become molesters. They do that um, trauma repeats itself, yes. manifests. And yeah. so these people were taught by white individuals to divide by race and color and were segregated. And so they see color because they were taught that. So they look at us and identify me with the slave owner because right. I'm the same color as the man that traumatized them. Which is a funny thing about Jews because, you know, the weird thing about anti-Semitism is you can be, you know, if, you know, if maybe from the African-American community, hatred towards Jews is Jews be, as white oppressors. And yet there's also anti-Semitism at, by white people who hate Jews because of their, they're not, they're not they white. Did. And it's this yeah. strange, it, it's kind of what makes anti-Semitism a unique form of racism as compared to other more cleaner or clear cut forms of racism where it's based on your skin color because everything you're saying up until this point really, I think demonstrates the Jewish family as to what it means to be a Jew, that it's not just, a, it's not racial, it's not religious. It's kind of all of these factors that kind of unites Jews around the world, Israelites around the world, this whole set of kind of ideas or whatever you want to call it. I've heard it described as one big Jewish family. That's what it means to be Jewish and not, pinpointing as one of these things but that makes anti-semitism that much more complex too yeah i tried to explain to a lot of these people i was arguing and debating in the african-american black hebrew israelite community Mm -hmm. that we had a miserable time in europe like Mm -hmm. i'm not european Mm -hmm. they didn't let my family own land they would like rape us every 50 years and kill us and like pogroms and like torture us to convert to their religion we had a miserable experience amongst those crazy europeans And so I relate to you, mm-hmm. who they took you on ships and, and whatnot. But then they say, you know, there was like Jewish money involved in the slave trade and stuff. And mm-hmm. I'm like, you know, I don't get any dividends from that. So <laughs> if there was and they still have money in their family today, I'll join you in the class action lawsuit if you want to like get yeah. a little reparation action. No problem by me. But that has nothing to do with the Jewish people. Right. right. Because we're just here to like study Torah and bring light onto the world.